Red Leicester is a raw milk, nutty, sweet cheese with a citrus finish. But no doubt what makes it stand out is its bright orangey red color. The cheese is actually deliberately turned this vibrant hue with a natural coloring called annatto. It doesn't contribute to the flavor of the cheese, so why is it added? The story goes that Stilton and its blue veins were so popular that other cheeses, including Red Leicester, were having a hard time standing out. So cheesemakers thought, what can we do to make it more popular? Let's just turn it red. And it worked. Red Leicester is one of the most popular cheeses now in the UK. So what is Anato specifically? Is it, like, is it a colorant, but is it na it's natural, right? It's a natural colorant from a South American plant, and it's been used since the early 1800s. Oh. And farmers' wives would have used marigold flour colouring before that, or carotene. Yeah. It's a very deep colour and it sticks to the fat protein, to the curd, to the fat protein matrix as it goes through the process. So as the whey goes out, it doesn't have much colour, but the curd does. Does it stain? Yeah, it does, yeah. And I normally manage to spill it everywhere, so they call me a Natto Dave. <laughs> oh, it's fresh. Okay, well, no need to do nail polish, you can just dip <laughs> Your hands in and out. Do you want to put, pour it in? There we are. You got it? Okay. Should I? What do I just, do? Just pour. It doesn't make a pattern, right? Your name. It's like a futuristic sort of painting or something like that. It's a monster. Yeah. It's like a tie dye shirt. Yeah. Oh. Right, I'm going to switch the paddles on and then it'll make a, okay. an even more mm. wonderful pattern then. Let's see. When the milk has curdled, Izzy and Craig here are in charge of cutting the curds until they reach the size of a pea. The curds still look a bit white, as the annatto hasn't fully stuck to them yet and is still swimming in the whey. One hour later, the whey is drained to reveal some very yellow curds. They are cut and cut and cut into blocks, with the color getting brighter and brighter each time. Oh my god, it's so yellow, it's like hurting my eyes a little bit. <laughs> You need sunglasses on. Right, because you're like so close to it and you know, you know when you stare at the sun for a bit too long. It needs to stand out. Yeah. The curds are then milled and salted. David uses this fork to evenly distribute the salt. That piece is a garden fork. Okay. And we had somebody put a stainless steel stale on it. Could you take a little lump? This one. Yeah, that's quite nice. <laughs> it just tastes yeah. salty now, doesn't it? Salty. Yeah, it just tastes salty. And squeaky. Salty and squeaky, yeah, I know. Our American friends will know about this. <laughs> Each cheese is then molded and pressed into what will be a 10 kilo wheel. When the cheese is two days old, it is cloth bound with lard, a traditional method that had been abandoned until very recently. A muslin cloth is dipped in a bain of hot lard and then wrapped around the cheese. Lard does not add to the flavor of the cheese, but creates a seal around it, preventing it from drying out and preserving its moisture and citrus finish. It also protects the cheese from molds, which eat the lard instead of the cheese itself, keeping it humid. Mold survives on the, lives on the lard, uh, and that slowly eats the, the lard away, and then that starts to, and, and then, then the cheese can dry as it matures. There's a lot, a lot of lard there. Just fold it out. Yeah, <laughs> that's not really, there's a bit of lard dripping, it's okay. Yeah. So you pull that down. Yeah, perfect. Grab one of the edges. Okay. And this edge. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And you'll be able to grab your hand underneath and flip it. Whoa, because this, all this lard yeah. is very slippery. Okay, and then just pull it down. Woo. There we go. Perfect. Red Leicester ages in a humid room from six months up to 14 months. Here, you can see the mold building up and starting to do what David wants it to do, eat away the lard and leave the cheese intact. In fact, despite its moldy appearance, the cheese will have a nutty, sweet taste with a citrus finish. The lard stays on the cheese and is only removed when it is ready to be sold. Larding, as well as using raw milk to make red Leicester, were two traditions that had been lost. Like other cheeses in the UK, red Leicester suffered the rationing of World War II, and farms either stopped making it or abandoned traditional methods. 
It was David who brought this traditional recipe back after over 50 years. Those colours on there are amazing. It's quite a contrast with the orange. Yeah, you, couldn't, you cannot do this job if you don't like cheese. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It, yeah, it is a bit crumbly, but yeah. uh, it still holds its shape. Yeah. yeah, but it's kind of meaty. We're looking for a meaty texture. Yeah. Mmm, ooh. Yeah, yeah, I really like, I really like this combination of textures, actually. Yeah. It has a nice, sharp flavour. Yeah, that's quite citrusy, that. So when you break a piece of Red Leicester, it should just snap. There's little white specks, which are basically tiny little pockets of air. So like eyes in the cheese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what a cheesemaker told me once. <laughs> eyes in the cheese. Yeah.